Hello, my friends, and welcome back to our channel. My name is Nikolai Nenov, and I am a certified food expert and pharmacist. Today, I'm going to talk about the connection between fructose and insulin resistance. Sugar is an integral part of the modern diet, but its excessive consumption poses serious health risks. Fructose, a particularly pernicious form of sugar, is increasingly associated with the global epidemic of obesity and type 2 diabetes. This video will explain how fructose affects metabolism and why it may be more dangerous than other carbohydrates. We will refer to a number of scientific studies that shed light on the alarming connection between fructose intake, insulin resistance, and related metabolic disorders. Fructose, sweet but different. Fructose, a naturally occurring sugar in fruits, is also a major component of the widely used high fructose corn syrup in the food industry. Although technically a sugar, along with glucose and lactose, fructose has unique properties that make it particularly problematic for health. Unlike glucose, which can be absorbed by nearly all cells in the body, fructose is metabolized almost entirely in the liver. There, it is primarily converted into fat through a process called de novo lipogenesis. This leads to an accumulation of triglycerides in liver cells, a condition known as fatty liver. Numerous studies suggest a close relationship between fatty liver and the development of insulin resistance, a decreased sensitivity of cells to the action of insulin. Insulin resistance, in turn, is at the core of the metabolic syndrome and a major risk factor for type 2 diabetes. Scientific evidence, fructose under the microscope. Several clinical studies directly compare the effects of fructose and glucose on metabolism, and the results are telling. A 2009 study in the prestigious Journal of Clinical Investigation shows that in healthy volunteers, the intake of fructose, unlike glucose, leads to an increase in blood sugar to levels diagnostic of insulin resistance. A 2012 study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition reveals that a 10-week high-fructose diet causes a 14% increase in abdominal fat tissue in overweight and obese men, whereas a diet with the same amount of glucose has no such effect. A 2018 meta-analysis, covering 11 randomized controlled trials, concludes that substituting other carbohydrates with fructose leads to a significant increase in insulin resistance and abdominal fat in humans. Fructose and weight gain what does the data show? In addition to the negative impact on insulin sensitivity, fructose is associated with an increased risk of weight gain. The Harvard Medical Center's large-scale nurses health study found that regular consumption of fructose-sweetened beverages, one or more per day, nearly doubles weight gain over time compared to infrequent consumption, less than one per week. A 2010 study in JAMA followed over 6,000 adults and found that daily consumption of sweetened beverages is associated with a 27% higher risk of obesity and a 44% higher risk of metabolic syndrome. According to a systematic review in obesity reviews, replacing calorie-free beverages with those sweetened with fructose or high-fructose corn syrup leads to significant weight gain in children. These findings likely involve appetite stimulation and overeating, activation of lipid synthesis, and suppression of fat oxidation in the body. Hidden fructose. The fact that fructose is not only present in obvious sources like soft drinks, sweets, and fruit juices exacerbates the problem. Processed foods, including those not obviously sweet like ready-made sauces, canned foods, meats, and dressings, widely use fructose, most often in the form of high-fructose corn syrup. Thus, even without directly consuming sugar, our daily intake of fructose can be significant and imperceptible. In fact, a 2004 study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition reveals that the average American consumes about 55 grams of fructose per day, which is three times more than the upper limit of 18 grams for women and 36 grams for men, recommended by the American Heart Association. What about the fruits? While fructose in its pure form may be problematic, we shouldn't avoid its natural fruits. Unlike processed foods high in fructose, fruits offer a variety of valuable nutrients such as fiber, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. Studies show that moderate fruit consumption up to three servings per day is not associated with adverse metabolic effects in healthy people. However, for individuals who are overweight, 
insulin resistant, or diabetic, it is advisable to limit fruit intake, with a preference for those with lower fructose content, such as blueberries, strawberries, and grapefruit. Prevention and control. Given the potential risks associated with excessive fructose intake, what strategies can we apply to protect our metabolic health? First, limit consumption of processed foods and beverages containing added sugar and high fructose corn syrup. Read labels and opt for whole, minimally processed products. Replace sweetened beverages with water, mineral water, or unsweetened teas and coffees. If you consume fruit juices, let them be 100% natural and in moderate amounts. Emphasize fiber in your diet as it slows down the absorption of sugars and improves insulin sensitivity. Good sources include whole grains, vegetables, and legumes. Maintain a healthy body weight through balanced nutrition and regular physical activity. This in itself significantly improves insulin sensitivity. If you are obese, have metabolic syndrome, or have diabetes, consult with a physician or dietitian for an individualized nutrition plan that includes strict control of fructose and sugar intake in general. Conclusion. Fructose, although naturally occurring in fruits, can have hidden adverse effects on metabolic health especially when consumed in excess through processed foods and beverages. Accumulating scientific evidence links excessive fructose intake with an increased risk of insulin resistance, fatty liver disease, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. Although it is not necessary to completely eliminate fructose from our diet, limiting added sugars and consuming moderate amounts of fruit are reasonable steps toward maintaining a healthy weight and optimal insulin sensitivity. By informing ourselves and our loved ones of the potential risks of fructose, we can play an active role in protecting our metabolic health and well-being in the long run.